All right, so this is chapter 11, Jeopardy. And again, we have our learning outcomes uh, according to each of the columns. And if you notice here, I collapsed two of the learning outcomes together under one category because there wasn't much in those sections. So group types and features for 100. So which type of group tends to involve face-to-face -face interaction among members of the group, each of, them, uh, each of whom is bonded to each other? What is common bond groups? So in common bond groups, they tend to involve face-to-face -face interaction among members, and the individuals in the group are bonded to each other. Whereas in common identity groups, the members are linked via the category as a whole, rather than to each other because face-to-face -face interaction may not occur. So group types and features for 200. University alumni associations as a group have what for many of its members? What is considerable intuitivity? And so intuitivity refers to the extent to which a group is seen as being a coherent entity. For 300, there is a three-person editorial department at Luscious Literature, a literary journal. Tom is an editorial assistant, Kara is a senior editor, and Helen is a managing editor. The team members differ in what? What is status? So status is one's position or rank in a group and can be used to influence the behavior of group members. In other words, those who follow the rules of the people in power will be rewarded. All right, so for 400, among those who highly identified with their group, a dissenter in the group was blank when the norm was individualist, but that same dissenter was blank when the norm was collectivist. What is? The dissenter in the group was liked when the norm was individualist, but that same dissenter was disliked when the norm was collectivist. So recall that collectivism maintains harmony in the group, whereas individualism, individual variability is to be expected and disagreement among members is tolerated. Group types and features for 500. If groups are cohesive, the members often work hard to support each other, to accomplish their goals, and to have high morale. In general, cohesive groups have what? What is solidarity? So cohesiveness is the forces that make group members stay in a group. And it's obviously an important factor in a group's influence on behavior. Other factors related to cohesiveness are seeing oneself as homo homogenous to the group, supportive of in-group members, cooperative with in-group members, and they are oriented toward achieving group goals and, as a result, perform better. Okay, so for the presence of others for 100, Jeremy is an actor who specializes in comedy. His friends persuade him to perform at a venue that specializes in audience-led improvisation, meaning that the audience chooses the subject matter for the actors. During the performance, Jeremy performs better than he ever has during the comedic scenes, but performs more terribly than ever uh, in serious dramatic scenes requiring strong emotion. Jeremy's overall performance can be explained by what? What is the drive theory of social facilitation? This is the proposition that simply the presence of other people is in fact arousing, which increases the likelihood of a dominant response. So performance is improved when we're skilled at a task and it diminishes when we're not skilled at it. Okay, so for 200, Greta works on a team at a toy manufacturing plant. Her team works on one type of toy and each team member focuses on the production of a single part of the toy. In this position, Greta, along with her teammates, performs what type of tasks? What is additive? Additive tasks are tasks in which each member of a group combines their efforts into a single group output. So for 300, 
Jason, Paul, and Mark are working on a group project for their social psychology class. Jason believes that Paul is not doing as much work on the project as he and Mark are doing. If Jason is accurate in his perception, Paul is engaging in what is called social loafing. So this is, it refers to declines in motivation and effort when a person works as part of a group as opposed to working alone. And often as group size increases, the amount of effort put, effort put in by each individual decreases. So for 400, Paul, Sarah, Deborah, and George are working on a research paper for their social psychology class. They can reduce social loafing by what is making outputs identifiable or unique, by providing feedback on each person's performance, and by increasing commitment to the success of the task. And finally, for 500, the psychological state in which we feel reduced self-awareness because we are an anonymous member of a sizable group is referred to as what is de-individuation. We may lose our individuality and engage in uninhibited behavior that we wouldn't see if we were alone or in a small group, like hooliganism, which is a negative stereotype about how people behave in crowds at sporting events, especially applied to incidents involving England's soccer fans. Okay, so cooperation and conflict for 100. How can cooperation be promoted in groups that work together distantly? Like, for instance, group work in an online class. Uh, what is? By providing reputational information. So part of what makes for good cooperation is social embeddedness, which is a sense of knowing the reputation of the other parties involved, often by knowing some or often by knowing someone else who knows them. All right, for 200. Situations in which individuals can increase their own gains in a selfish manner, but if enough other people do the same, then the outcomes for all people are diminished, are referred to as what are social dilemmas. And if you look at the item to archive for module 13, there is an example of the prisoner's dilemma there. So check it out. Okay. For 300, one primary goal in negotiating with an individual or a group is, what is, to reduce the opposing side's aspirations. So the most common strategy for resolving conflicts is bargaining or, or negotiation, which is the process whereby opposing groups exchange a number of offers and counter offers until a conflict is resolved. An example of this, Wendy approaches her manager at work because she wants a raise. Once their meeting begins, Wendy is candid, saying, I've worked here for five years without a raise, and my responsibilities have increased by 25%. Therefore, I would like to ask for a 25% raise. Her manager is thoughtful, but eventually says, we can't raise your salary 25% unless you work on Saturdays and Sundays. After thinking about this, Wendy says, I won't work both days, but I'll work for four hours on Saturday. The manager agrees, and Wendy gets her 25% raise. Which tactic for reaching an integrative agreement was used? What is bridging? So integrative agreements are ones that offer greater joint benefits than would be attained by simply splitting all differences down the middle or one side simply giving in to the demands of the other. And you can look at all the tactics uh, that are listed in table 11.2 on page 385. All right, cooperation conflict for 500. These are goals that both parties involved in a conflict seek and that bind their interests together as opposed to tearing them apart. What is or what are superordinate goals? So if both sides see that they could share one common overriding goal, conflict decreases as cooperation increases. And you should remember this from the robber's cave. Um, scenario that was described in an earlier chapter. Okay, fairness and group decision making. So the equity rule states that available rewards should be divided among group members in accordance with their contributions. The equity rule falls under what type of justice? 
what is distributive justice. This is a rule stating that rewards should be given out based on how much each group member has contributed. And if people receive more rewards than seem justified by their contributions, we perceive this as unfair. Okay, for 200, when individuals don't have all the information needed to make judgments about the fairness of a particular situation, they tend to rely on what as an indication of fairness? What is their current affective state? And uh, along with this, you probably want to be familiar with procedural justice, which is our judgments regarding the fairness of the procedures used to distribute rewards to group members and transactional justice, which is the extent to which we're given clear reasons as to why rewards were distributed in the manner they were and the courtesy used in relaying such decisions. Okay, for 300, a number of venture capitalists know that they want to invest in Foodle, a new tech startup company. Up until now, the VCs had never met as a group, but they each knew that they could invest up to one million of their own money. They finally get everyone together to discuss the matter, and by the end of an all-day meeting, each member has agreed to invest up to $3 million. This is an example of what is group polarization. So this is the tendency of members of a group to move toward a more extreme position than their original position simply as a result of the group's discussion. Okay, for 400, let me scooch this up. Okay, approval for a new light rail has been granted by a major city. Those on the project are excited to begin, as they have been planning for the project for many years now. However, not long before the first day of work on the project, one of the team members notices a critical flaw in the business plan for the project. He can't believe no one noticed it before, as the error is so large that it puts the entire project in jeopardy. He pleads his case to the project manager and the financial committee, but, they, but everyone he speaks to is so committed to the project that they refuse to look at his evidence. He eventually quits as he doesn't want to work for a team besieged by what is groupthink. So this is a tendency among a very cohesive group to believe that their decision must be right, that all members of the group must strongly support the decision, and that it and that information that contradicts the decision should be ignored. Once groupthink is in place, groups are unwilling and unable to change their decision, even in the face of evidence that the decision was a bad one. Okay, and for 500, when creating a group of experts, all of whom bring different expertise to the table, it may be particularly important to make sure that dissent within the group is welcome. This is because groups tend to what? What is share only unshared information? Oftentimes, members of a group fail to share unique information. Therefore, many of the decisions are the result of only the limited shared information. This may prevent a better decision from being made if an individual is holding back valuable information. And finally, the role of leadership for 100. What involves setting the group's agendas and influencing others to act in ways that will achieve those goals? What is leadership? So influence is indicative of leadership. All right, for 200, research on the great person theory of leadership indicates what? What is that traits explain little of the variability and do a poor job of differentiating leaders from non-leaders and effective from ineffective leaders. Okay, leadership for 300. What are the two essential parts of the leadership relationship? Well, obviously one's leadership, and so the other would be the followers. And so here, the leaders and the followers are like they bi-directionally influence one another. Each is essential to the other. All right, for 400. Okay, Jesse is thrilled to be considered for the CFO position of XYZ Computers. 
They offer her the job and she works for a year.